are in the studio when we don't know what's going to happen, when we're in this very sensitive place, we're very open, things can go any which way, we're very emotional. For me, museum is a place as, such as this. Only who is making the art? It's all of us together. So it's not even the artist, but all of us who are painting these images to really make sure that they're resonant and coming to life. So you know, on your desktop, right, we have these little things that we call icons. And it's a promise that if you double click, more will open. It's based on this idea. All of the icons in this room, they're portals. So there is kind of a mystical background to how the artist would create this alchemical process, knowing about the materials, connecting to the materials. But then to the other side, this altarpiece would not exist without the patron. The artist could not put these beautiful, expensive colors anywhere they want. It is the patron that tells them, I am commissioning you this work of art. The subject will be this, the size will be that, and they will also tell you who will wear the blue. So generally, Mary or Christ have the most expensive color. And the color, the expense, is determined about the property of the material that's crushed, the pigment that goes into the paint. This is not your azurite blue, which is also stone, but less expensive. This is not an indigo blue, which is made out of plant, our genes. What you have here is lapis. It has to be imported from faraway lands, which we now know as Afghanistan. And then in order to make this beautiful pigment, the stone had to be purified, many layers scraped off, ground, sifted, and only the purest, a little bit of that powder remaining was turned into color. This is an extension of your studio. You can come here any time. But I would like you to make this your space. That is to be your studio. This is where you get dirty. This is where you come sweat and draw. I want the museum to be this. Something happened in this room. We went from 1300 and now we're in 1600s, 300 years. These were very important 300 years. And in a way, the best way I could describe it, we went from TV screen to movie screen. Not just because there's narrative, all of these are stories. It's no longer was icons and symbols, now we have stories. Within this painting, the light source itself is painted. So actually, if you come closer, I'll show you the trick how to make this. You have to first have your gesso, create an underpainting. Then you build up the layer of sienna. And then you took a brush, and you can actually see the strokes of the brush. I talk to you when you come into my studio about your brushes and what makes a good brush or a bad brush and what different brushes can do. This is a brush that's thick and the hairs are splitting. And he's dipping his brush into the white with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of gray, three colors at once. And when he pushes one brush stroke, he's also doing what I call feathering. You start thick and pushing down and you end up wispy and lifting your hand and removing it off the canvas. And it creates almost smoke-like effect, like the paint is dispersing. It has gravity at the bottom where it originates and it becomes very light, right, as it goes up. That is determined by your touch, the pressure of your brush. So many times I will talk to you that there is very important to see the, the values, what's light, what's dark, and what's in between. But other times, I will talk to you about brush strokes and the direction of your brush strokes. Yes, this is a painting, but you have to imagine that you're almost sculpting it. And do you see how when we look at this chest and the shoulders, it feels like we could touch him? It's very 3D effect. And I want you to see the brush strokes, they follow this. I would do this. Brush stroke goes different direction. So I want you to take a moment anywhere in this painting and look at the direction of the brush strokes. Cannot see this in an art book. Can you see this in a production? No. no. That's why I drag you out of your environment, out of your cars, out of your studios, out of your schedules, and bring you here at least once a month so because we need to get closer. Yeah.
this particular artist had royal privileges. And with this privilege, where does his studio go? He was given a studio at the Louvre, now the Louvre Museum. In the royal quarters, the best artisans were supported by the king. They were with the king. Because how does the king become known and great? By the artists that represent him. I wish we had the same system today. Yeah. Right? do this all day, just looking at these things, because normally when you come in, you're just looking, you go, oh, that looks good, it's interesting, but you have no idea the context. 